Khmer. Call the name No, not the German, because that's the end. That's yeah. We're done. <laughs> Just lost call the order. Day. You call it to order. I'm calling it order. Um, you're being recorded. Does everybody have a minute? Oh. Oh. Is it them that were those? Did you go around? Motion to accept the minutes. Okay, so um, you have to, yeah. Motion to accept the minutes. Can someone ask a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed. Any abstentions? Well done. Okay. Um, Update discussion on styrofoam ordinance. Well, there's a rubber. I was wondering. Uh, Council Adam showed up last one. So yeah. We forgot to give him the, the memo. Oh. So Sad. he showed up. No one's here. <laughs> He's counting on pizza. <laughs> but, and I cc when I emailed Marlene about today, I cc Councilor Adams, but I don't know. He's, he might not be able to come. Um, so I don't know. What's, What's new since? But you guys probably knew stuff. Well, it was kind of happened last time since I missed the time. Oh, okay. That's fair. Um, that's right. You weren't here. Yeah, I had baseball. The Youth Commission presented to Councilor Adams the information. Actually, you guys did a pretty good synopsis on the, on, on the points that we focused on. The questions seemed to get huh, more on economic impact. You guys all correct me when it sounds like I'm going south. But the discussion about what the economic impact would be for um, replacement um, means of doing to-go stuff. The, you know, Council Adams particularly concerned and interested in what the um, business community's response would be to something like this. And as you guys said, same thing, is that it, it's kind of important to do outreach with them before, instead of having them suddenly reading the paper that Northampton's discussing a styrofoam ban. And that just tends to get people pretty cranky if there's no previous conversation. And it's a little tricky. There's, I forgot, there's, there's an enormous amount of restaurants in this town or food purveyors. I think it's 101, wasn't it? I think that's why I counted it. 101 or 98, one of those two. It wasn't 100 exactly. But and did that include also institutional kitchens yeah, and things yeah. like that too? That's, that's pretty significant, yeah. So, and then plus, there are a lot of uses for food trucks too. So, um, there's a couple. The, to be honest, I think the um, regulations a little restrictive. So you don't see them downtown. They can't be downtown. They can be. They can be up at the high school actually. Um, there's one called Chanterelle. What's that? Yeah, there was there was something. I, there's a yeah, couple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're gonna. I mean, you'll probably see more in the coming months. I know some other people apply for licenses, but. Um, if the rules change or get more liberalized, then we'll probably see more. So, cool. um, but they, you know, they do basically their whole business is to go. So it might be nice to give them a heads up for all the other associated costs that we should consider that not to serve in styrofoam containers. Um, but that, would, yeah, essentially that's it. I mean, the 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 report. Council Adams found it very helpful and he got he was really psyched and agreed to accept co sponsorship from and the vote was taken, I think it was unanimous, right? For everyone yeah. to sponsor the ordinance on the styrofoam band. So we missed you. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add on the on the information and research part? Uh, um I mean, I don't necessarily know how much was said and stuff, but I, I don't even remember which thing I did. I think it was involved 
not the religion part, but the economic part. And um, there, I think there's like three different sort of big cities that had done this. And from what I understand, New York City is supposed to have it in effect by the summer or end of this year. And San Francisco, or Sacramento, I don't know, some California place already did it. And then there's some other like city that people don't really care about, but it's about this size and they did it too. <laughs> and all these different places, I mean, it didn't make sense to me, but they said that there was no loss in the amount of revenue that companies were making for some way or other, and they were like explaining how somehow they just figured out ways to change the costs and stuff, and they said, that, like, I don't know, somehow they said that companies weren't losing money, and I'm not quite sure exactly how that was coming across, but I feel like that would be something in the future we should look into more, so we'd be able to, maybe if they change something, we'd want to do that too, so companies would be happier. Make yeah, the, the big discussion was the cost differential between the alternatives and the, mm -hmm. there was the mushroom stuff, right, mm -hmm. and the, and, the um, yeah, and paper, cool. and is that it? was the two alternatives, but the plastic, and um, what's the cost difference between that? I mean, remember, these guys are buying in bulk, so, yeah. um, but you get a sense of, you can find out in pricing what one styrofoam um, to-go container costs in a comparable version of the same amount of food would cost as alternatives might help to break down. My guess is it'll be a little more expensive. And But how does that translate? So if they buy in bulk, does that mean they're spending an extra $20 a year? In which case that's not really, a, that wouldn't really be painful. But if it's a difference like $1,200 a year, that'd be significant. So, so that it'd be good to know that going in before, before I, was, I mean, there's a lot. Um. I don't think we did anything, any work on the, I'm just trying to figure out, it says here, um, reserve top, uh, new business. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we did much work on the PowerPoint. Um, but I do have a question that's somewhat irrelevant that I was thinking about today. Um, when Marlena and I are gone, we're both, co we're both chairs, mm -hmm. what happens? When you're gone, you mean when you got it at the end of the, by high school, by graduation? Because juniors and so on will be still in school. They'll be in school for another couple of weeks, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were in for uh, I mean, traditionally what we've done is, well, that's true. I'm trying to think of when we've had seniors as chairs. I think we can, but I mean, I'll be gone. I think she has plans for June as well. Yeah, and I mean, what meetings do we have in June? Really? Well, commencement, you get out of school before commencement. Commencement's later, right? Yeah, May 22nd. Right. I think it's also like depending on when you have the AP test, too. If you're done with your last AP test, then you're probably a student test, I don't mind. Well, yeah, I mean, but oh, like if you have, like, uh, yeah. if it's, like, like no. Except unless you're Sam with all freshman classes. Who? The, but you're still, you're sticking around for commencement, so, and I'm trying to think, I mean, what we've done traditionally is, um, you know, we've suspended the Youth Commission in the summer because it's, it would be cruel to ask you guys to come in when you're on vacation, mm -hmm. given the amount of money you get paid for doing this, so. <laughs> the and then the next issue, then they vote for the chairs if they, if they're seniors. But um, I'm just looking. I'm trying to check out June here. Um, I'm just saying we should be like very prepared for the moment when it's over and there's still more things to be done. Yeah, I mean we know and that's true, and that's and that's why you know try and figure out something on the scope of service for the remaining time that we have, which is. Essentially, it looks like two more meetings. Yeah. yeah. So, if we if we have if we two more meetings, maybe by then, okay, you've got as an objective develop the PowerPoint, make a real kick-ass PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. That'll be it. You guys have already done, as I said, you guys have already done more than any other youth commission that's ever convened by almost double. 
So, and significant. I mean, you you know, between the stormwater discussion and actually co-sponsoring an ordinance, that's huge. No, youth commissions haven't done that before. So, you guys don't have to feel like you're coming up short. But I think if you if you have a rock and PowerPoint with this thing, then that's a that's perfect. That's all that we that's that's more than we could have expected anyway. So, and that'll give it that'll give Councilor Adams, Councilor Specter. A presentation that they can get schooled on and then we'll can have them come so that you guys can break it down for them and they can use that presentation when they make their case i'd like to have that and then i'd also like to have by the um end of the meetings um other commissions on board or at least educated on what we're doing right so but does like that mean the health board and sunlight and dp you know, like that i mean the tricky part is is that of course there's no ordinance yet. Right, but there's so, the proposition of one. There's a proposition of one. I mean, you can speak to, you can ask to speak to the Department of Public Works or the VPW, the Board of Public Works. You can have Terry Halpin come back. Uh, have him come here and you can give him the presentation if you want to do that for the last meeting. And, um, also, it probably would sound pretty good to say the health board was on board. They said they were definitely very interested in hearing about it. And it sounded like it was a good cause, but they said, like, it seemed like they were in support of it, but they needed, like, if they were going to make a decision, they want, like, factual exactly. type stuff so they can say, oh, this is why we're supporting, like, oh, it leaks, it, it can leak into food, it has been on the carcinogenic list, and all, all those good things. Like, have a reason. That's uh, Mary Fleury. Fleury is the. Uh, the staff member of the health commissioner. If if we set it up for the la final week, say the final week in May, final week, maybe have someone from the Board of Health, and someone from the Board of Public Works, we'll hook this thing up and make it work. You can so do legal voters. Illegal women voters. I mean, they're not, a, I mean, we can invite them, but uh, they're not a city agency, they're an independent voter agency. So uh, when we invite, the committees, I mean, it would be helpful for them as far as education and taking that education out into the community. And I'm sure they'd like to come. We can't basically insist that they come. We can insist on the Board of Public Health and the Department of Public Works at some level. But that'd be great. So I feel like we can't really do much this meeting on the um, PowerPoint because we don't have the necessary. But um, can we write up something that we would say to all of these people um, in like an email or something as a group? Yeah, you, um, you know, something along the line. Uh, the Northampton Youth Commission cordially invites you for uh, to their final meeting in May, which is what the, looks like the twenty first. That's before Memorial Day weekend, um, but uh, uh, the uh, the the um, their final meeting of the Youth Commission for presentation on the impacts and effects of styrofoam use in North America. And that's it. And you say in anticipation of possible of a possible ordinance. So you don't have to like do a big thing. No, you don't have to do a big thing, and then you can also say and. Um, identify it's in the hearing room, City Hall hearing room meets at 7 o'clock, 21st, and, and give your contact information. <coughs> and I'll get you the addresses for the people that you need to send that to. You know, if you want, you can do a press release. You can do, you can notify the press, you can notify the public. Yeah. Well, what do you guys think of that? Did, didn't you say like you thought it would be good to like at least talk to like um, whatever that thing's called, but then the chamber of commerce? The chamber of commerce. Actually, I would invite the chamber. I think the point that you invite the public. Because I think this is more for the agencies that would have to deal with the public, and the, so that if you think about the stages of education, inviting all the public is helpful, but. It's, Suppose we get a packed room, but if we invite all these agencies that are also in charge of doing the education, have them first see the PowerPoint 
And then when Councilor Specter and Adams use the PowerPoint for public education in neighborhoods and stuff. But does, does the Chamber of Commerce count as one of those, or would that count as more public? Chambers like, chambers like the League of Women Voters in some respect, but the fact is they represent a number of businesses, and I think it'd be helpful to have them here. Yeah. At least the Chamber of Commerce. And Suzanne Beck is the head of that. She's very nice. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think it's great. I mean, the, the most resistance you're likely to get is from the Chamber of Commerce, so it's good to have them in on board, so at least you get a sense of what their objections might be so that you can address them or work towards addressing them. And that you could leave as the charge for the next Youth Commission convenes in the fall. Mm -hmm. So say that these are the Chamber's concerns or let Council Adams and Council Specter work on it. But right now you guys have done most of the work for them. I mean they've researched the law but they haven't researched the impacts and you guys have done that. So, so I think with those groups right there, you've got maybe 10 or 11 other people in addition to the Youth Commission. That's, that'll fill up this room pretty decently for that little bitty, bitty screen. So, and on your PowerPoint, yeah, I'd work on polishing it. Think about hit your points. I think the, the four areas of concentration you guys focused on were perfect. Present it that way. Give them some graphics. Try and beef yeah. up your stats. Like pictures. Pictures and People things, pictures. pretty pictures. Yeah, it's with like one line and one word right. that says like it's good. <laughs> it's good. I mean, the the horror of PowerPoint. A lot of people do with PowerPoint presentations is they show you the slide and then they read you the slide. At which point you go, why am I? Why didn't you just read it to me? I don't. It's if what you want to do is be able to expand on what the slide says, and. But I think you can have in your PowerPoint presentation, because a lot of people also ask for them printed out, um, so that they can, particularly referencing um, health statistics relative to um, styrene, um, costs for alternative uses, you know, economic impacts, anticipated economic impacts. Um, the the landfill issues about these things have, you know, styrofoam does not break down and, and the effect that it has on the, the impacts on the environment. I think I just beef that up. You don't have to get lost in the weeds with lots of statistics. You're framing the subject, so you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, dazzle them with science. You just have to make a strong case that you can support if they challenge it. Okay. Um, I... I don't think it should be purely Molly and I's job to do that. So um, maybe we should split up some of the work um, and have like one group of people beef up economic, one group beef up environmental. Um, and then Marlene and I will do picture statistics and um, double checking what we already have. Can you anything like actually illustrated too? I can do that. Like graphics. If you can't find graphics, or if you want something really specific. Mr. Artista. Draw it with my hands. Okay. Actually, I think that'd be nicer, actually. It's, like, these things can be deadly. If <laughs> anyone's yeah, seen a PowerPoint, it, it'll suck your soul. <laughs> and so if you can, if you could actually humanize it with hands on uh, stuff uh, and stuff like that, uh, it could really uh, uh, So. That'd be good. I mean, I, I mean, you know, don't be afraid to have fun with it. Don't don't turn it. Don't try to make it look all officious and grown-up stuff. Because those things are lethal. They really are. There's no one. You know, you don't try to. As I said last time, don't try to impress them that, that that you know you're trying to compensate for the fact that you're younger than them. Because as I pointed out, actually, you know, on the stormwater debate, you guys know more than nine tenths of the community about this on, on, the, on the issue. You never have to apologize for what you're asserting. You don't have to do that. So present it in your own voice the way you would, as if you're talking to somebody. As if you don't need to do wisdom. The stats will do that alone. So make it you and make it fun. Have some fun with it. I mean, I, you know. I don't think it has to be a complete AV immersive experience with music and 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 dance performance, but you know, 
Yeah, unless you're, if you're up for that, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, do you think you can share the PowerPoint to us? Because, like, I only saw it that time last yeah, so like, yeah. When I got so, home, I'm going to the case if we're not up there presenting, at least we know like, more about it than just not seeing it more. And then if you share it with everyone, we could just re-subdivide into the original so group. Everybody wrote their Gmail. Also, one thing is, I don't know, I mean, I don't know how comfortable you are with this like Microsoft PowerPoint, but I think it's easier to really customize and make it a specific way with Microsoft PowerPoint just because it has a lot more things you can actually do and making things the way you want. Because like one thing, I mean, that like, because Google presentation, like it's really good at making things like kind of basic. And if you do do that way, then it's really good to not have that many words. But if you want to find a way to put more words and things and in like more spatially type ways. I'm not good at that. Okay. You can, you can embed you video are. on PowerPoints. You can do, you know, remember if you're embedding video, remember how long the video is. I mean, if you can find a decent YouTube video, if you want to shoot your own video, but that's then you were getting to a big project, you have less time to do. But if you find a YouTube video, they're usually about between three and four minutes long on these type of things, so that'd be fine. Mm -hmm. also, but same if you want to do any graphic stuff. So when you say drawing, like what would you draw? Whatever you guys want. Graphs, for instance, graph uh, or or an image of of I don't know. Someone choking on styrofoam. I don't know. I don't know. What to say. But it's it's that just yeah. Have some. That outlet is there if we need it. <laughs> and also, it's always nice, like when someone does like a real like a really good presentation, even if it's like with an easel and everything, it almost makes like what it makes it more like humany sort of, and it's not like that one extra distant thing. So if it, like the background isn't just white with like black print, because yeah. like that literally will make people fall asleep. People like so drawings. Like, there you go. Also, one optical a question I had was, no. does, no. does, or just a we'll think about letter. it. Does surveying and that sort of stuff would that come after talking with um, that that the I've never heard of the chamber. Yes, the chamber of commerce. Um, I think you can do a concurrent, or, or at least ask them for. I mean, it's tough now at this point, as I said. You got a month to try and do a, yeah. a comprehensive survey; it'd be pretty tricky. But if you get contact points from the chamber, you can send out a form letter mm -hmm. and just say, "How do you use styrofoam in your business? Um, would you consider using alternatives? Um, if not, why not?" something fairly simple and basic and uh, and see what the response would be that you would get back. Or we have like... I mean, the way I split it up so it's like, it, the way I, I kind of, like I have a list of all the different places and I made them like by where they are sort of in the city and stuff so people want to just go to like, like if each person went to just like five different ones and actually want to have a face-to-face -face thing. I don't know how intimidating that might be, but I, it would definitely be manageable. Yeah, we have plenty of I would actually say go in pairs, though, because people would probably just be like, oh, create yeah. some like other random party. Yeah, trying to get me to do something. Yeah. Well, well you introduce yeah, yourself to. Wait, well, yeah. use what you. Big paper. I don't know. Just real paper. Would you, when you go into the places, if you introduce yourself, yeah. I'm with the North Mayor's Northampton Youth Commission. Say that. That's enough to get you on track. And we're we're just conducting an informal survey um, as we discuss the use of styrofoam in the community. And I'm wondering if you can answer three questions. I wouldn't give them a long thing, expecting a lot of their time. So think about what those three questions would be and how they would answer. And um, then say thanks for your time. And yeah, we'll be in touch. But uh, it's, you know, I'll be back. Show me the peace. What would those just don't feel like the Well, I think of it, as I said, you know, how do you use styrofoam and do you use styrofoam in your business? How do you business? use it? Would you consider alternatives? Right. And then you could also do like, what you could do is something like, do you think switching away from styrofoam would like, Detrimentally hurt. Right, right. Except if we're doing a survey, then we have to 
and make the questions straight out, yeah. or else we'll skew yeah. the. And they're learning statistics. AP stuff. Well, it's, it, and yeah. that's true. This is for that's for a statistical analysis. But I think what you're trying to get a sense is the temperature. So this is not necessarily a statistical analysis. For instance, if the first question you ask them is, "Do you use styrofoam in your business?" and they go, "No," and you go, "Thanks for your time." <laughs> yeah. I, mean, what, I mean, what's at that point? What are you going to say? Oh, well, actually, what I would say, actually, at that point, that's a good alternative question. Say, "What do you use instead?" and have you found any? Has it affected your bottom line? Yeah. If you've chose not to use styrofoam, the alternatives that you use for to-go materials, how much, you know, did, was it a big cost difference? Because then you would have that, and then for the people who say they do use styrofoam, have you considered alternatives, and why not, or would you consider alternatives? Would probably be better. Would you yeah, consider so alternatives, why not? And, and then, and if they say no, and you say, would you feel comfortable saying why not? And so that you know, and I think those are, and that would pretty much cover you. I think that's, you know, you don't have to tell them, you know, are you concerned about poisoning our, our environment? <laughs> Does that bother you? I agree. <laughs> it's, what, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, said, would you say all and they said yes, what would we say? Uh, okay. You say, um, what alternatives would you prefer and why? But they don't know the alternatives. Well, if they consider alternatives, well, they do. Everyone knows what the alternatives would be. I mean, besides, short of you know, having the customer cup their hands and they'll shovel whatever <laughs> in there. But I mean, they, they know that it's a cardboard, plastic, uh, aluminum foil, um, paper, mushrooms, mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and mushrooms. Have you tried mushrooms? <laughs> that would, actually, that should be your first you question. You get a lot of answers. <laughs> yes, yeah. That'd be first question. Have you tried mushrooms? Are you on mushrooms now? <laughs> Just want to figure out where we're going. Um, so they'd say what alternatives, so then they said if they said yes, what would you say? Do you use styrofoam in your business? If they said no, we said what alternatives do you use now? What would we say? Um, and then they give you the alternatives and you say thanks. Oh no, and then you, I would ask them, I would, the follow-up question is, is there a big difference in cost for you? Because that's what the ones who are going to be, who would have to be compelled by law, that's the thing that they're gonna to have to consider and that's the thing they'd be most resistant to, so. Okay, so I think that we should, like we have two weeks till our next meeting, how comfortable would people feel going out and surveying before the next meeting? Wait, let me count how many there are. What, are, are, we, are, we, are we including talking to schools and Smith and whatever in that? No. They would be covered in the ban. Although I think you'll find at Smith, I don't think Smith uses styrofoam. I do not think so. Either. But I go to their food services in the campus center and just ask them. And then uh, with, you know, and you can talk to your, you've got, well, you have an intimate relationship now, John. Mm -hmm. What's the, uh, mm -hmm with the, the, oh, the yeah. vendor the, in the school, so they'd be delighted to hear from you about you and your damn styrofoam questions again, but that's... There's 101 different places, but like a few of them are like the Dunkin' Donuts like inside of the gas station and stuff, I mean, but I think we do have to consider them because yeah, I mean, Dunkin' probably, Donuts is probably going to end up being our biggest... Yeah, the they're using styrofoam cups for their coffee, so... And they're... And <coughs> plastic. They're, what, they're, what they're liking, though, really? <laughs> Oh yeah, well that's for their cold drinks, yeah. for their coffee. But you know what's going to happen at Dunkin' Donuts? They're probably going to refer you to corporate headquarters. Yeah, yeah. They're going to say uh, you'll have to talk to our corporate headquarters. In which case, that's fine. You can deal with all the Dunkin' Donuts with a letter. <laughs> a letter. A letter. Oh, a letter. Climb sure. up the hill. Yeah, a ladder would be good too. But <laughs> no one people drink the corporate ladder. No one walks through town with a ladder and it's drink DDs and so. <laughs> and a clipboard. <laughs> so there's 17 restaurants about on King Street alone. Really? And then there's... Oh, right, because there's all like the fast food. Our grocery oh stores. Oh my god, there's oh, so yeah. many. On, there's about grocery 30 stores, grocery stores, stores do, you know, the salad bar to go stuff and, and prepared mm -hmm. sandwiches like cereals, doesn't prepare food. Yeah. 
Street. Street. It's, it's like the Street. Yeah, I mean, the, if this is a, it's the go container. There's like a cafe. Wait, I'm there's there's like a cafe across, across from the place I work. Yeah, I think. Where do you? Do you work in the same place? Oh, do you yeah, work in the same so place? Yeah, yeah. I love like and shop. Scotty's. I can Scotty's. tell you. Scotty's. 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 Okay. Which is the place. Okay, so Different who does not have access to a car? I work at the one that's like way up. Not the one who doesn't the drive? Guy. I work at the full service one. But so you guys still be driven by Scotty's downtown. Do you work in Williamsburg? Yeah. Well, it's not Williamsburg. It's not Williamsburg. All right, so I think we should just do it. We've been talking about it for a while. But do we? Do we want to? Yeah. We should yeah. 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 first. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Wait, I don't know. Do they care if we're talking in restaurants? Like, does who? We the Commonwealth. The chamber. 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 Yeah. You have. Yeah. By the way, just, just the Chamber of Commerce. Please. The, you have the right to do and ask anyone anything. <laughs> the chamber has no say in that. But they won't get like a no. Like, would they get like annoyed or anything? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. No, you're showing due diligence. What you're trying to do is you're trying to consider. You're going to do. You're, there's several types of interviews. There's called push interviews, which you hear during campaigns. When somebody calls you up and they want you to vote for a particular candidate, and they push you loaded questions. This is not a loaded question. This is clearly a fact-finding issue. There's no reason they should be upset. You're actually doing due diligence to try and find out their membership if they actually mm -hmm. would be impacted. This is something that you would hope that they would be able to do too. No, the, and I wouldn't worry about the chamber in that respect, but you, I mean, I think that's okay to feel concerned about it, but I don't think they'll be upset by this at all. You're not going into telling, you're not trying to shame these yeah. guys. You're actually trying to find out what their biggest challenges are on this thing, so. And if, if they'll likely ask you why you're asking the questions, and you can say there is a discussion about uh, some counselors are considering proposing a styrofoam ban in the community, and we're trying to determine what the impact would be on local businesses. Mm -hmm. And they'd be down. They'd be definitely down with that. That means that's as it should be. Okay, so will you post on the Facebook page? Or is everybody on that? What? The Facebook. Oh yeah. Well, you post on the Facebook page each location, like each section, including the all of the restaurants in that section. We will then bid off sections and have that by our next meeting. It's like a lottery. <laughs> God, yeah. And we'll do it by the next meeting. Yeah, we'll have it done. I don't by want next me. So should we have like a standard sort of questionnaire? Yeah, so yeah, I should just make the standard questionnaire. Okay. I'll put it on Google Docs or something. Also, oh, should yeah. we have a protocol making sure we talk to like the senior person working? Yeah. Because like, that's like. If we go in, what do we like say? Yeah, like, like well, you just like, don't sign and you're like, hey, they'll be like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you just say, can I speak to the manager? As you yeah. Say, I say, hi, I'm with the North Mayor's Northampton Youth Commission. May I speak with the manager? What they're going to think is that you're trying to sell them some ad in the yearbook or something. That's what they're going to think. And so as long as you can say right off that you're not asking them for money that you, and explain what you're doing, and they're probably be pretty receptive. Okay. If you go in the middle of the lunch rush, they'll probably be pretty cranky. Yeah, I think so, yeah. generally after school is like yeah. probably good after yeah. like 2 o'clock. Actually, 2 o'clock, there's like a weird lunch rush with moms. But it's not as bad. I mean, if you went in at noon, that would be terrible. Sam, will you, can you mm -hmm. send me that like list of emails as well when you do that so I can just check? Uh, um, well, it will, it will just so that I can, I can make sure, because I don't want to just make like, you know, I guess I could make the list public. Oh, I can also already say Top doesn't use styrofoam. But should we do if they want like more information or something? Are we going to give them like um, I don't know, a handout later on, or should we give something when we're asking the questions? That's a good question. I would say that we're yeah. doing research, we're conducting research for this, and um, we'll try and keep you up to date on how it's proceeding. I mean, it's difficult for you guys to make promises because a lot of you aren't going to be here. Yeah. Well, could so. we like print out the PowerPoint and give that, like, hand it out if people ask for something? Because you know what we can do? Yeah. When it comes to that, we can put it on the website and okay. you can refer them to the website to check. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, what are we or we can say yeah, yeah. if you guys want to just give like free one to write down an email or something. Say if something coming up in the future, if it's something like yeah. businesses. Like, but, like, whose email would we hand out? Well, no, I mean, no, they're there, there, so we can. Uh, yeah. Or maybe we should make a youth commission email. There was one at one point. 
Yeah. I mean, it's easy. Not yeah, there, there, was a, there was a youth commission email, which just sort of went to the ether, so no one ever answered it. So it wasn't really. <laughs> It was a nice idea, but no one followed up. The email's only good if someone answers when you send them something. But, but, but if you collect their email, then we can just... Um, actually, you know what you do? Give them the North, it's northamptonmob.gov. Give them the website for the city. And check on the city website. Um, this, the PowerPoint will be posted, our statistical findings will be uh, listed there, and the ordinance, if it comes to fruition, will be posted there as well. So it's Northampton Ma, M-A, for Massachusetts.gov. And if worse comes to worse, you can give them my name. Okay. <laughs> Just do it like that. Sorry, right, so here we go. Yeah. I can make copies. Pass those around. Give me one. No one's really going to make copies. Yeah, don't take the gnarly ones. No. Let's see. Okay. Oh. I'm going to not. Do you make, like make my wallet. Okay. Right. How many are you making here? Uh, <laughs> make about this. I'll take one also. 400, 500 million. Yeah, you have a lot. I hand them out. Yeah, so I can get cranky phone calls and stuff. Oh, good. <laughs> Did everyone get one? So you, you, can, you can give them my Northampton email, the wdwight at northampton.gov. The other ones aren't personal email. Try not to give my cell phone number, but they'll find it anyway. But that's all right. It's, it's, that's fine. Um, Why city is city? What? The first city is wrong. Get out. The I is capitalized. No, it's cool though. It has an L. Shit. No. <laughs> oh, is it really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no one cares. Great. Sid. Oh, you got gypped. Oh, Sid. oh, you're right. Yeah. Look at that. Sorry, I don't. Yeah. Like the, <laughs> the first <laughs> batch they sent me, the seal was stuck way over towards the right into my name. I'm going, what? What the hell is that? <laughs> Where do you find these on the internet? This is not on the internet. On the internet, they messed up. So they give me a free batch of cards last time. Maybe I'll give them another batch. <laughs> You're doing capitalizing the I. <laughs> or I could go through every card and erase a little space in between. <laughs> yeah, it's a little white out of each one. <laughs> Good catch, though. Good catch. So can we recap what our um, our our mode of action will be on the following time? Yes. So our mode of actions will be the following. I am going to. Email, uh, share the PowerPoint with each of you, and it would be fabulous, fantastic, and very wanted if you would each look over it and make the changes that you see are necessary. I really want you to do that, so please do. The second would be that, um, so, Jonathan, if I'm thinking that maybe if you made it so, like, if this wasn't too much work, having it be like a survey. On the Facebook page, you know how to do that? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah I, I just put the thing up there also. The Fabulous. Perfect. Um, and then have each of the plate like sections and then two people on each. So do, you, so, so do you want me to make the survey question things also or just say the different restaurants, whatever people can just like. You like a sign up change? Oh, no. It's if you do I the mean, survey and just then say like I'll do numbers this through this and then yeah, or like the ones closest together, you know what I mean, like this section. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then if two people would sign up on each one, any leftovers, I'll figure out. I might sign up. We also, I feel like don't do it at every single place, do we? I, mean, I, don't think, I really don't think it's one, two, three, four. I mean, the more we get, the better. You might also be able to cross off the really crunchy all the pieces. Yeah, but we would still have to ask oh, what they're doing. But then they can also, like, if they want to support us, like, further yeah, and, like, hear about us. 
so they would like support it. So in it's theory, if we all did it in pairs of two, then we'd have to go to 20 restaurants. What? Which is a lot. I mean, that's why you want one three questions. <laughs> you want to five minutes at each of two hours. Yeah. I guess also like, yeah. we had like a day. commission day, like you just like set everyone loose on like Main Street. And that would take like, go. An hour. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do an hour. You have one hour. How many restaurants can you get done? Like and flying then Should we have the question, would you be willing to support the youth commission in their endeavor to answer? I wouldn't do that. Yet. Yeah. Okay. That's I wouldn't do that yet. Because then that look, sounds like a push survey. Well, that's just, just that. no. trying to push them. Push them, maybe. All right. What were the three questions? So the questions are like that. So there's a yes, no, and then can I be like really condescending if they do use styrofoam? Is that like <laughs> no. oh, interesting? You you use styrofoam? Really? Oh, okay. I'm sorry for you. <laughs> it was like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Just say it sucks I'm for sorry you. Sorry, you don't care about the whale. The law. <laughs> 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 no, the cards never. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, I, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like to do mushrooms? <laughs> So the, the thing is, actually, the data that you get from this, I would incorporate in your power. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're like, look at us. We, we did. A, we've done a survey of 160 restaurants in Northampton. All the all, of, and this is what we came up with. Yeah. 160 restaurants. That was a guesstimate. Yeah, that was a guesstimate. 101. 101 not including schools. Oh, okay. We're not doing schools in session. I'm not doing schools. Well, you might, want to, you might want to ask Smith's food services because they're so huge and they're not using styrofoam. That'd be of course, they got exciting. more money than God in some respect, but you might ask them what's, you know, what, what's the cost difference. So, would people just like have that information in their They place? should, yes. I mean, a well managed kitchen, and most restaurants would. I mean, that's, that's your, you want to know. I mean, some people might not care. They might just say, I don't know, this guy, this vendor comes by, he offers me the stuff I buy him, I don't use them that much, but this is what I got. Mm -hmm. But other people go, yeah, that's, that comes, it costs us, you know, $2,500 a year for to go containers, and that's a certain percentage of our revenue, blah, blah, blah. Should we ask the question, what do you use, what styrofoam do you use, like these little guys? The clamshells? Yeah. I don't think you need to determine type because if you if this band goes into effect, it's going to affect all of that. Okay. So the clamshells, if you, you know, styrofoam cups, it's, it's, those will all be banned under the band. So the, you want to figure out if this band goes into effect, what's it mean for their bottom line? And, mm -hmm. and can we offer them reasonable alternatives or reason not to be afraid? You may, and let's be mindful of the fact that you may determine that it's too prohibitive and that a lot of businesses say, I simply can't afford it, in which case we're going to have to rejigger our thinking and figure out, well then, if we're going to put this ban in effect, we better figure out a reasonable cost alternative for them because otherwise we're putting restaurants in jeopardy. And if that's the case, that's, that's a legitimate concern. So that's what I'm saying. That's you're actually finding out real information. Right now, everyone's just guessing. No one really knows, they're just guessing. You guys are about to quantify um, the facts as, as they're presented. Yeah, so that's, that, that's, this is probably gonna be the most salient feature on the, in the debate, so. And once you got the stats on it. So I didn't buy that again. Yeah, that's right. Well, they, they will, but that doesn't matter. That's okay. Bring up the stuff. We have those before. Yeah. Okay. You don't need to burn up to it minutes if you don't want. We don't. Even a journal if you want. But. <laughs> Wait, this is, I actually have a random thing. Today I was at the skate park. And quite a few people mentioned skate park expansion. I don't know if you know anything about that. But I haven't heard anything about that being proposed. The Vets Field, what's the next project scheduled for that is the ball field. Yes, the baseball field. Yeah, and then fixing the parking lot. 
Yeah, the parking lot. Yeah. Oh, the nice. skate park was epic though. It took that took us twenty years to get. Yeah, and it's a great park, yeah. but a lot of people there's like a lot of space unused in there that's fenced off, and even. There's like this big green area. That oh, 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 yeah. And yeah. there's uh, mulch ring around it. And people were, and a lot of the local skaters I've talked to have even mentioned that even if the city provided the concrete, they would build it. The, I don't know. What you should do is building. actually, and this is the thing about the skate park that was so tough, was every time we got someone engaged, skaters engaged, yeah. we had them for a year or two. And city issues take longer than that. Yeah. And they're, they're by the time they get their licenses, they were they really didn't care about the skate park, right? Yeah. So we lost all these advocates all the time, and then we had to keep reinventing the wheel every time. But if you can get them to discuss and think about, and I, and I realize you're talking about skate rats, but you, you talk to them <laughs> about getting organized to petition to make reasonable cases for some changes to expand the use, to, to get rid of the mulch field, because you can't use that, yeah. and why not? Use that part. I don't know why the reason for that is. It may be there's yeah, not the the surface thing. issues or something, yeah, yeah, but because it fills up the water real fast. Exactly. That's that's probably the reason that's there. So because yeah. you built this giant tub, <laughs> and so I don't know, but it's worth discussing, and it's worth you know, if you, you know, for the summer. That's when it gets its highest use, and you know a lot of people down there. So just yeah. see what they're up for, or, and then, and you have my card. So, and, and, you, and I know your dad. So it was across the street from. It says the last meeting when we're going to be talking to all the businesses and such. Yeah, I mean, I should contact them before the next meeting. The people to come for the yeah, the invitation that you sent out. Yeah, have it drafted and ready to go. We might maybe we just send it out from the meeting once everyone goes over. Everyone feels comfortable with it, and then we can just send it out in an email blast. Okay. Yeah. So that'll work. Um, and I have another really bizarre question. What are you going to do about the roads? Ooh. Well, this is, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> like the the potholes. The, yeah. the, the, the roads every year, this happens every year. Potholes, like potholes in the spring, panhandlers in the summer. These are the hot issues. This year is bad because of the freeze thaw cycle. It Two things. Like five times. It happens five times, and then the rain makes it worse, too. So you get loose material in the pothole, people, and then puddles, and then you go through, and that just sort of blasts it. The other problem is, is that we, over the last 15, 20 years, the state has cut back on funding for road repair and road building, and that's called deferred maintenance, and now it's all coming home to roost. So what they're going to do is they're going to patch them up. They've been patching them up, and the patches are getting blown. This We've got another few weeks of this. And then it starts to settle down as the pavement starts to get warmer. But there's going to be a lot of patches. It's, I mean, you know, Woodlawn Avenue is going to be horrible. Oh, Pomeroy oh, Terrace oh, is going to be horrible. Oh, up, up, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think the road next to Child's Park will just be like blown up. Woodlawn. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just start just over. over the whole thing. I, 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 I don't think George wants to do it. He wants to blow off your street. Aren't you on Woodlawn? No, that's Serena. But you're at the street next to it. Yeah. Right? You're on, then you're Massasoit. But it's like, it's better. It's better. Anything the problem with Woodlawn is there's literally a river yeah, running yeah. from Charles yeah. Park yeah. towards to the Y. And that's where it gets the worst. And it's also where we park for the high school and stuff. But it's, so essentially, that's it. We don't, we used to have, we used to be able to completely redo streets like North Street for a year. Now we can only do one a year. What are they going to do? Woodlawn? They got to do Woodlawn. Woodlawn's on the schedule, but Woodlawn is a huge project because they have to put in a whole new sewer and storm drain system. They have to dig up the road down to several feet. It's a big, big project. And that's a like area that is often used. Yeah, 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 it's like, residential yeah. too. Yeah. 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 So it's it's tricky. So and like I'm in favor for like dirt roads. You know? Dirt roads. <laughs> no, should, like, make them dirt roads. Well, the problem is dirt roads. For instance, you go to the Hilltowns. Dirt roads now, you can't pass them. So they're all mud. Yeah, it's okay, but it's like not pounds. I mean, if we do dirt, <laughs> yeah. you, you can make like good dirt. You mean, there's some dirt that you can make some like nice dirt. Yeah, it's like for like 10 years, everything's a patch. Well, it's, it's, it's a problem. I mean, this is <laughs> it's a cumulative problem, and it's what the federal level about infrastructure. 
Um, we throughout the whole country, we have bridges that are collapsing, highways that are collapsing, road systems, all because we refuse to continue to invest in the infrastructure. We stop investing in our infrastructure. We got dams, we got all that stuff. Like the, the same thing the whole stormwater discussion was about deferred maintenance. Is and it's the federal government and the state government used to pay for that with income taxes, but as they reduced income taxes, they put it back on the regressive tax system of property taxes. And it's not like anyone's getting richer here. It's, and so it's the, you, you know, they're not that rich. Actually, if you look at Northampton's demographics, we, we present a lot richer than we actually are. We're not very rich at all. We're, we're in the state median. We're right in the middle. And, but the, there's only 29,000 people in this town. There's not, it's not a lot of people. We're we support we pretend we're double. Yeah. So well, and so on any given weekend, our population doubles. Yeah. That's unusual for any community. So all our infrastructure is going on the stressor as if it, if it was a 60,000 people in this town. Mm -hmm. But it's in Route 5, and Route 10, and Route 9, those are all state highways. The state, those are state obligations if they're not meeting either. And the there same thing with 91. So it's it's... Yeah, it's a horror show, and it will be lots of patches, and the idea is patches so it won't be a smooth ride, but it won't be blowing out your tires every 10 minutes. I've gone two hops on Woodlawn. Maybe stop going on Woodlawn. Yeah, I'm not going on Woodlawn. There's so many people on Woodlawn. Well, the other issue is that, that cars are all going to tubeless tires, so your car is a tubeless tire, which means basically a tire sitting on a rim. And all it takes is just one little pothole and it pops it out. And all the Subarus around here, if you pop one tire, you have to get them all replaced because of the four-wheel drive. You have to get the back two replaced. Like, you have to get the doubles. I think you're getting sold a bill of goods. Yeah. That's, no, there's no... You're getting sold a bill of goods. I've been to four different places. Like that yes. I mean, it makes yeah. sense because the tires all get worn down. At, like, yeah. That's true. There's bouncing tires, but the thing is you don't really have to. You don't. They recommend it because they make four or five hundred dollars every time you do that. But you don't have to do that. Just imagine if you put on a spare tire, not the donut. It would still. It's a wheel alignment. It'll eventually increase tire wear and so on and so forth. But it's the same thing. You're making the same decision as people about roads. It's it's. You pop one tire, you don't have to replace all four tires. That's that'd be crazy. But don't you, you have to replace these two so that they have the same wire so that the four wheel drive is like. You can do rotation. You rotate the tires so that you can balance them. Mm -hmm. Like a wear. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I need yeah. all that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.